Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mr. Saucedo's YouTube videos. Today, we're going to be going over the difference between a good Google Sheets graph and a bad Google Sheets graph. So let's get started right away, since this is a skill that we'll be using for the entire year. First thing, make sure that your graph has a title. Okay, you want to make sure that your data table has independent and dependent variables and that your title reflects that. You want to also make sure that you have a column for the independent variable, which would be the column on our left, that would be right here, tire width, and the dependent variable on the right, that would be maximum speed right here. You want to make sure you include labels for each variable, that would be again, tire width and maximum speed, and that you include the units. So tire width is measured in millimeters, maximum speed was measured for this experiment in meters per second. Make sure that you include the number of trials that were conducted as individual data sets. So that's why it says trial one and trial two. How are we going to go about manufacturing a graph from this very simple looking data? So I'm just going to do trial one, but for trial two, you could have a second graph. So first, highlight all of your data, including the labels up here, and click on insert chart. So it's gonna give you recommendations for the different chart types, but just go to chart types and select your own. And so 90% of the time, what we're gonna to wanna to select is called scatter. And so that's a scatter plot chart. And when you click insert, it will insert it directly into the document. So I'm just gonna resize it just a little bit. And then let's start editing it to make it look actually kind of nice. So the whole point is if I were just to insert this graph, I would get almost no points because first of all, it doesn't even follow the directions that I gave at the beginning. And secondly, it just kind of looks ugly and boring. So if you right click on your chart and go to advanced edit, it'll let you edit everything about your chart. First thing that's got to go right here is this title. This title is not very descriptive and it's kind of boring. So let's change that to the effect of bike tire width on maximum speed. So notice it includes independent and dependent variables and it tells you exactly what this chart is. And so you can change the font size if you'd like, you can you know make it italics if you have like a color scheme you'd like you can change the color that is very bright let's dull that a little bit okay uh, this is what we call the legend and so you can move the legend around so that it, you know it goes to different places or you can click on none and get rid of it completely i'm going to keep it um hmm. yeah, let's leave it where it was on the right you can change the background color for a graph but i don't recommend doing that a white background normally looks the best we can change our axis here. All right, so our horizontal axis. Um, so let's take a look here. So we have 20, 25, 30, 35, and 40. So we're looking at our tire width. That is our horizontal axis. So width, and that is in millimeters. You can change the um, size of that font. So let's change it to 15. Uh, the actual axis itself here, if you wanted to, you know, increase the number size, make that bold too, you can. Um, you can change the font color. Actually, let's let's try to make that all kind of blend a little bit. You can change the maximum and minimum values. That's very useful. So let's say I want to start at 20 like I have here, but let's say I want to go to like 35 instead. If we do that, though, it's going to change the values in between and take a look at what that does. Mm, these aren't as nice as the original numbers. So let's change it back to 40 again. Okay. Also want to change my vertical axis here. And so that would be the maximum speed measured in meters per second. Okay. I want it to match. So let's change the size. Let's bold it. And there we go. That looks kind of nice. Uh, let's say I want to change the actual height here though. So um, let's start at two like it has here. And let's go up to 3.6 and see how that changes the graph. No, that's not too bad though. Like you would be able to estimate here. Okay. And actually going back to horizontal, uh, you can add more grid lines if you'd like to, to make it easier to read. So right now we only have five grid lines and these big lines are called grid lines. Let's say I want 10. And then minor grid lines appear in between those grid lines. So let's say I'd like five for each box. That kind of looks a little bit easier to read, actually. And let's go back to the vertical. And let's change that. If we do 10, okay, now that's a little bit harder to read. So maybe that's the reason why it went from a max 
up to four. Yeah, there you go. That does look a lot better. And again, you can add even more grid lines if you'd like to. Okay, so right now it's looking okay. Um, here's another little important piece of information though, trend line. So almost always we want a trend line inside of our data. So if you click there, you can either pick from a linear data set, which would be like, you know, a straight line. And who knows if this is supposed to be a linear relationship or not. We really don't know. Um, you can change it so that, you know, it actually doesn't just say trend line for data series one. You can just make it say trend line. Um, you can label it using an equation. So instead, now it'll give you the actual equation of this line, which is really useful in certain situations. You can change the width of the line to make it bolder, to make it, you know, a little bit smaller. Uh, changing the opacity will make it like an actual just single colored line or it'll fade into the background. Another possible thing is exponential. That would be if the relationship is changing a little bit over time a little bit more. And so we'll talk about when to use those, but that would be an example of a particular type of relationship. Let's keep it linear though and go to update. This is a very nice looking graph. And this is one that I would probably give full points for. So if you take a look here though, you can save this image, you can publish it, you can copy it, move it to its own sheet. There are a lot of different things you can do to get this into the document you want. Um, but let's take a look at some pretty bad looking graphs just so that you know never to kind of do these things. So let's take a look at this one. This one is absolutely horrible. There's no title. There are no labels. I don't know what the X or Y is talking about. There are no units. So for all I know, this could be any type of unit that we're looking at. The data points are all connected. So that's way too perfect. Okay. I mean, obviously there are difficulties in doing experiments. So this is almost never going to have, you know, this kind of data set. Uh, also, the line is completely straight, which goes with the data points, and they're all connected. That's definitely not something that you ever really get to see in science. What about this one? This one doesn't look as bad, but it also has something very, very wrong with it. Look at the title. It has a title, but how much does a speeding ticket cost? Okay, that doesn't tell me what my X or Y axis are supposed to be or what the units are. Um, also, take a look at those data points. They connected them all together, which... By the way, I don't think you can even do that on Google Sheets, but you never know. Um, also, again, I'm not really certain what this graph is trying to tell me. But a good graph would be something like this. The effect of increased automobile speed on average ticket cost. Okay, that is a very descriptive title. It gives me the independent and dependent variables. I have my variables here. This is speed from zero to 100. This is the ticket cost from zero to $240. And I can find these points. So take a look again at this, where they were all connected, versus this, where they're kind of moving around, but they drew a trend line between them. So that trend line actually is giving me a lot of good information. For example, from the looking at just this graph for a, a couple of seconds, you can show that there is a correlation between the speed of the automobile and how much you're ticket costs. So if you go slower, then your ticket doesn't cost as much. And if you go faster, then it does. And that's basically it. So just take a look at this video if you ever need a little refresher course on how to make your graph look good. And uh, if you have any questions, make sure that you just kind of ask in class.